All right. Well, welcome everybody. I'm Jeff. And I'm Carolyn. Kevin, and we are the owners of the Riot Company. So welcome. We uh, we are thrilled to have you guys here. Uh, having the Porsche Club here is actually something we have talked about wanting to do for a very, very long time. Most of you have probably never even heard of us before. And so we're hoping to change that. We are actually one of the world's fastest growing microfiber companies in the automotive space. Uh, we've just added five major distributors in the past few weeks, and we shipped over 50 countries around the world, um, growing extremely fast. We've added a second warehouse, and now we have a third warehouse in the works. Um, I, I, this is just absolutely a dream come true, because we do so much around the community, but hardly anybody knows about us. But because of these guys, I am pointing over here to my team, we have really large social media presence, and that's what's helped us grow. And these guys have the expertise to help drive the business, and it's, it's been fun. This is just, I can't say enough about how, uh, how exciting this, this really is. What's, Any rate, what's so. What's really helped us grow too is that we have great quality products. And everything that we choose and have manufactured from, the, from our factories is um, made with great care and feedback from detailers around the world. So we're always trying to improve things. And so we want to provide the best quality and also the best service. And these guys <laughs> help educate. And these that's what we work. that's what we like to deliver. The business has actually been around since 1999. Mm -hmm. And uh, the past five years, like I say, have just seen tremendous growth for us and uh, no stopping in sight. Um, weather cooperated today. Most of you brought your cars, which is great. Um, I did want to give you guys a heads up. We are on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And you're sitting right here next to the camera, but you don't have to worry because the camera's coming towards me. It's not coming towards Good. you. Good. <laughs> but at uh, any rate, it, this is, uh, let's see here. Oh, administratively, bathrooms. Bathrooms, if you just go right around uh, the building, going in the front door, sorry for the inconvenience, but I've got my team working inside for today's shipping. And so if you just go around through the front, the bathrooms are right there, uh, just inside the front door in the middle of the building. Um, food and drink. Oh, they just showed up. Very good. Up. So we got food and drink for you guys coming in. Uh, we do have a couple specials that we're putting out there. All the products that the guys are going to be demonstrating here today, uh, we put a special, special package out there. It's $99.95 for everything. We've never, ever offered anything like this. But we figure you guys took the time out of your busy Saturday to come in here, get the experience from these guys. So we want to be able to return the favor. It's about $160 value for, for under $100. Um, anything else administratively you have? Um, no, we just appreciate the fact that you came. And we hope that you learn a lot from Levi and Anthony. And so we're going to let them take it from here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. You know, During the show or after the show, we're always happy to answer questions. So please just let us know. So what I'm going to do is introduce these two gentlemen right here. They are really the face of the company out there in social media. We have hundreds of videos out on YouTube. If you haven't checked them out, please do. Great information. Levi's been in the detailing business for well over 20 years, has wealth of experience. He's IDA certified. Uh, skills validated and within just a couple weeks he's also going to be one of the very very few trainers around the world for IDA International Detailing Association. Anthony has been with us for about a year and he is a detailing enthusiast really knows his stuff he's come up with his show that's why we put his mug here he, he has a show called Wash Wednesday uh, there's a there's a ton of shows out there Levi has details with Levi they do a weekly podcast every Monday along with Dane and uh, so we have lots of stuff going on all the time, lots of information. We have a lot of fun. We've got a great staff. But at any rate, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it on over to Levi and Anthony. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So like Jeff and Carolyn said, uh, you know, here at the Rag Company, one of our primary goals is education. It's our very first core value that we try and strive for. Uh, for us, we want to educate everybody. We want to educate them, <clears throat> excuse me, we want to educate everybody on microfiber because not all microfiber is the same. And there is a lot of uh, talk <clears throat> out there where people don't, uh, don't really know. You go to the, the auto store, you pick up a bag of towels and you hope they're good for your paint. 
uh, but there's a lot of differences uh, in that. So one of our big things, the reason for our shows, is to teach and to educate uh, all our customers on how to use the towels, what the towels are, why they, why they work, and uh, how they're made, basically. So with that, we've got all our towels that we're going to use today. These are some of our favorites and some of our finest. Um, again, a little bit about myself. <clears throat> I was born and raised here in Boise, Idaho. I grew up just right off of 36th and State there. My dad's still over there. Uh, and I've been a detailer since I was, my, my mom jokes that since I was on her back in a backpack uh, as she was waxing cars with my dad um, on the side for, for extra money. Um, I professionally became a detailer uh, when I was about 17 is when I actually fully started doing it for a living. Uh, and I've been doing it for the last 20 years. Um, I started here at the rag company a couple years ago solely out of necessity. Uh, I needed towels. And for my shop that I owned, I needed good microfiber towels. We were starting to do higher and higher end detailing. And one thing that I was starting to notice on a microscopic level, I was scratching the cars as I was taking the wax off. So I had finished compounding, finished polishing, finished waxing the car, and as I was taking the wax off, I would scratch the car with the towels that I was using. And that started to get very, very frustrating. Because when you've got customers that are showing up to your shop and they're dropping $1,000 on getting the car cleaned, you can't have scratches. So that had me start looking around. I started trying to figure out who's got a good quality microfiber that I can buy. I don't have to go to Costco and get towels. I don't have to go to the AutoZone. I've got to be able to find a company in the world that has really nice towels. And I found a few of them. But what I didn't know <clears throat> was the rag company was right here in Boise, Idaho, three miles away from my shop. So <clears throat> I came down, met with uh, Jeff and Carolyn. Me and my guys came in. We spent three hours learning about microfiber. And it was, a, it was phenomenal. And that's how <clears throat> my transition kind of grew. I started answering more and more questions for customers around the world who were calling into the rag company asking detailing questions. Uh, and then the time came where Jeff and Carolyn asked, hey, we'd love to have you on board because you provide this knowledge. So I'm thrilled to be here, and this is one of my favorite things to do is to teach others how to use products, how to use equipment, how to use tools. Uh, and then with Anthony, I'm going to let you go because okay. I've been talking okay. for a while. Yeah, this is exciting. So hopefully my voice projects. Uh, it's the first time I've done this without a microphone. But uh, yeah, this is exciting, guys. I'm happy to be here, happy to be uh, spreading the education, the knowledge of proper wash techniques and everything like that. That's kind of what my whole show is based around that we do on YouTube is that I take um, everyday car enthusiasts and I show them the proper way to maintain and take care of their awesome cars. So uh, a little bit of background on myself, kind of how I got started into the whole detailing thing. I was that kid that was 16 years old going through one of the spray, you know, paint spray washes using that brush. Everybody knows that wheel brush that you should not use on your paint. I was using that on my paint. I was causing a lot more damage than I should ever have needed to. Now, with that said, I kind of started going down into a rabbit hole. Once I bought my first nice newer car, I wanted to learn how to take care of the paint. That was the first thing I Googled when I got home after I got the title. And the first thing I started seeing was microfiber, uh, two bucket methods, all sorts of different things like that. And that's kind of where it all kicked in. I started learning proper wash techniques to prevent swirls, reduce swirls, reduce micromarring, things like that. And with that said, um, I started going deeper and deeper and I wanted to know about polishing, I wanted to know about buffing, compounding, uh, everything there is to know about detailing and that's kind of when I got uh, lost on YouTube. I started watching a ton of different YouTube videos uh, explaining how to buff a car, how to wash a car, things like that. And it was funny because I was a big fan of this guy called The Junk Man on YouTube. He had a lot of just straightforward polishing techniques and buffing techniques. It was really old school, but he got straight to the point. And it was funny because I was watching his videos regularly, and then one day I saw an upload saying, The Rag Company, you know, the best microfiber in the world. And clicked on that video, started watching him, and then I started seeing that uh, he was showing up these amazing towels and then mentioned that they were based in Boise, Idaho. And I was like, no way. So at that point, I had Googled uh, The Rag Company, and the next day, I had, I had driven down to the Chinden location, which was actually their very first day in that building. They were just moving in. They just moved from out of the garage into that building. Everything was covered in boxes. And I said, hey, I just saw this video. I, I, I want to buy some towels, basically. So 
um, that's kind of how it all started. And I got really into microfiber, really into detailing, uh, really into different wash products and detail products. And kind of where we stand is Levi's the pro. He's been a pro for 20 years, where I'm more of the hobbyist enthusiast detailer, the weekend warrior. I do detailing on the side. I am also IDA certified. And I absolutely love detailing, but it's one of those things where it's kind of like my zen. It's kind of like something I enjoy doing on the side. It calms me down, and it's fun, and I like knowing that I'm taking care of my investment because that's ultimately what you're doing, right? Taking care of your investment and making sure that it looks good along the way. You know, you get a few looks when you're driving around. So anyways, that's kind of who I am, and, and we're excited to get things started. Yeah, we, uh, like I said, these products that we're going to be demonstrating, again, we produce and manufacture all this microfiber that we have, but we're also a distributor for Optimum Polymer Technologies, uh, which are all these products. Um, <clears throat> Optimum Polymer Technologies, a little bit about it. Uh, it was started by Dr. David Gaddusi, who is an uh, organic chemist. Uh, he holds the patents and recipes for DuPont and PPG for automotive clear coat. Uh, he's known as the father of modern clear. He also holds the patents for Mercedes and BMW for their ceramic infused clear as well as the recipes for that. Uh, currently, he's still active in the industry. He is reformulating General Motors clear coat this year uh, because those of you that may know, uh, it's very, very soft. And if you look at it, it scratches. So um, he's trying to harden that uh, as well. But 16 years ago, he set out as a little side game uh, because he realized that there was a need in the industry where uh, People didn't know how to care properly for clear coat. So he developed a line of products that are specifically designed to care and protect your clear coat at the highest level possible. Um, so the first one is the backbone of the system. This is ONR, also known as Optimum No Rinse. And what this is, is a rinseless wash agent. So any of you that know what rinseless washing is, the key is in the title. It's a no rinse formula. So you can wash your car with water like you normally do. You can put this in your wash bucket instead of soap. You use it to wash the paint of the vehicle, but then you don't have to rinse anything off. Uh, this sounds weird because in your brain you go, well, no, I've got soap and I need to rinse the soap and the dirt off. This product is designed to have heavy encapsulation and emulsification property. So what that means is it will take that dirt particle when it finds it, it will completely encase it in a ionic cushion which will then allow that dirt particle to be, to be suspended in that bubble. Uh, one thing that this benefits is, again, you don't need the water to rinse it off. You can just absorb it right into a towel. Uh, so that saves you time and money, but also the biggest thing, most people take all the time in the world when they're washing. They do very thorough, they do lots of foam, they do lots of soap, they get very soft uh, wash mitts, things like that to not cause scratching, but then they just grab a dry towel and they dry the car. 90% yeah. of scratches happen when you're drying the car, not when you're washing it. So what you need is what they call a drying aid. So while the car is wet with water, you need to apply a lubricant to the surface <laughs> to provide that lubricity for the towel to not scratch the paint. O&R already has that in itself because of its lubricating properties. So when you're drying, you don't cause any scratches. Dennis has been using O&R for a long time, I know that, and he has some of the nicest paint in the neighborhood, and you as well, yeah. And so uh, we've got lots of folks here that already do use it, and they can testify to the fact that it, that it works. Uh, it's, it's not going to stop you when you get mud and dirt on your car. Yeah. you still got to wash that off. There's nothing in the world that can prevent, uh, you know. Yeah. The ability to get the mud it's, and dirt off. you still got to pressure wash or, yeah. or get it with a hose. O&R is definitely, it's... it's it's kind of hard to, to get past that step and get past the soap and water, get past the heavy rinsing, get past the heavy foam. And I realize that it's a, it's a huge mental block because it totally goes against everything we've ever learned, right? Soap cleans things, not some random product, you know, in a bottle of polymer, you know. And so the thing is, is kind of when it comes to O&R, when it comes to polymer technology, uh, Levi's explained this before. It's kind of like watching, you know, an old VHS tape on a huge 4K TV, right? It's kind of like you're living like in the past, but yet you're still watching it on this the brand new, new tech, yeah, brand new technology. So it's kind of the same thing. I mean, they're washing chariots with soap and water. So, you know, soap and water can advance, you know, just yeah. like anything else in life. So 
Polymers are amazing because if you guys know, we live in Idaho, obviously, and we have hard water everywhere. I mean, who has hard water around here? You guys know what hard, you guys know what hard water is? You can look at your faucet, you can see the, the white everywhere, uh, the calcium buildup. So hard water is all over the place, unless, unless you have a water softener, of course. And so hard water is my biggest enemy because I, for years, I was spraying my car down with water. I was forgetting to dry my windows, right? You know, first things first. And I have, I have water etchings all over my car that I had to polish off. Uh, and if you don't see them on the surface, they're going to be in your door jams. They're going to be underneath your hood. They're going to be in your trunk. They're going to be in places that uh, you're not going to see until you pop open the trunk and you see all this white residue. What's awesome about O&R is a polymer is a natural water softener. So it actually keeps that magnesium, calcium, and all of that from bonding to the surface of your clear coat, causing etching. So technically, this is going to be safer than any water that you could spray on there in the first place. And like Levi said, its encapsulation properties are pretty cool. And so what I would always recommend is, yeah, if you have heavy mud on your, heavy mud on your car, if you have tons of dirt, do a pre-spray like you would normally do, but then continue on to the wash with O&R. Now with O&R on light dirt or perhaps just like this portion behind us right now, if you were to spray O&R, do a pre-spray with one of our sprayers here, you can actually look really closely and you'll see these little bubbles, these little bubbles of water, and you'll see the dirt swirling inside of it. It's super cool, super yeah. advanced. It's, it's definitely different than what we're used to. Well, and, uh, and like we said, a lot of people just have to get past that. Yeah, mental so, block. Uh, one of the cool features you think about when you're doing soap and water washing is your soap is designed to encapsulate those dirt particles, right? So if everyone goes, I need lots of suds, I need lots of soap, I need lots of this to, to grab all that dirt and hold it and give it that, that cushion. Like I said, O&R already has that. That's the beauty of it. Yes? Do you spray the car first? You can spray the car with the hose. Yep. You can also spray the car with O&R. We put it in a pump sprayer and you can, you can mist the car. With the hose and yep. And then wash it. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then for extra heavy dirt and stuff, this is a mixed bottle of what we call Power Clean. It is a all-purpose cleaner, and it can be diluted any number of ways. It can be diluted one to one straight for really, really bad stuff. I usually say you need to degrease a motor uh, for, at one to one, but for wheels, tires, inner fender wells, uh, say you get heavy bug accumulation or anything like that. I recommend three or five to one. Uh, if you want to use it as an all-purpose cleaner for your interior, I recommend 30 to one. Um, it works really well. And again, this whole line, Dr. G is designed, uh, is all designed to work together. They're all substance, they all have substantive polymers, which are designed to build and bond and create different levels uh, on how they work. So Got O and R as your backbone wash system. This is great for everything. In my shop, yep. it was my window cleaner. It was my uh, carpet shampoo. It was my clay lube, and it was my wash solution. It did all this, and you can dilute it in different ways for that. Yeah, it uh, has all the dilution ratios on the bottle itself. So whether you want to do a quick detail or clay lube, all of that. And the crazy thing, this is highly economical. This gallon yes. is 256 gallons of product. Yeah. So the mixture is 1 to 256 is what its ratio is. So that's awesome in and of itself. Um, second, we've got Car Wax. This is the very first product. Oh, you got a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what effect does it have on clear film? Uh, it won't damage the clear film as long as you're not running it straight. Are you talking about power clean or O&R? O&R. O&R oh, has no effect on the clear yeah. film. It's totally safe. Uh, it's not going to hurt it at all. So... Uh, the next product is Car Wax. It was the first product designed by Dr. David Gaddusi. Uh, it is the only sprayable Car Wax on the market that holds two patents, one for UV protection and one for longevity. It's got five months of protection in a sprayable form, and uh, it has UV polymers that migrate into the clear coat itself and bond with the old UV polymers that were originally designed in the chemical process. So the goal is that it rejuvenates that clear. Yeah. This is an insane product and everybody that's ever come up to it with Dr. G, he can explain, he can go down into the science if you want and his number's on the back of the bottle and he will answer the phone, uh, which is a fun, fun thing to have. But the reason he designed this wax was all of us have used paste wax, right? Got your can of wax, you got your pad, you put your, your wax on. What most of you don't know is that 
case wax has what's referred to as a carrier agent. That carrier agent must be a solvent. It's always either mineral spirits or a petroleum distillate. That product, when you put it on your paint, has abrasives in it because the old single stage paint, you have to remove the oxidation. So you need, need an abrasive product to ab abrade that. And even the softest waxes have abrasi abrasives in it. So you have to remove those. So you're gonna be putting micro scratches into your car. Then you're also putting a solvent into your clear coat. For those of us that know, solvents are not good. Take, wipe the car down the mineral spirits and lactic thinner every day. It's not gonna be a great thing or once a month or twice a year. It's not something you need to do as, an, as a general occurrence. Uh, so once that carrier agent off gases and releases, that turns the wax white. So those of you that have waxed your cars and you hit your black plastic trim, what happens? It turns it white. Not fun. Not fun, not, not and you fun. can't not, get it not out. Not fun. Uh, so what's great about this product is it's a water-based product, and it has no carrier agents. One of the neatest things is this stuff bonds like concrete. So if you spray it on the front of your car and you leave it, it will turn to concrete, and you can't get it off without buffing it off. What we recommend is you spray it on and you wipe it off. Very simple, very easy to do. Use it like a quick detail spray, and you get tons of crazy great protection with that. I guess to elaborate, I mean, it's not going to literally turn into concrete. No, but you it, don't gets, necessarily, it, it will bond. Yeah, it's going to bond. Yeah, we don't want to scare you guys yeah. here. But the thing yeah. is, it's kind of like turtle wax, right? It hardens like a shell, right? That, very similar to how this works, but like we said, there's no abrasives in it. There's no carrier agents. Uh, you can spray it on every Everything. surface of your vehicle. You can vehicle. spray it on your glass. You can spray it on your plastics. You can spray it on you know, your wheels. You can do yeah. all that. Spray and wipe and you can protect all that, which clear is... Clear bra as well. Clear bra, clear bra yeah. as well. And what is also great is those of you that use paste wax with your clear bra, you get that ledge of wax, dried yeah. wax. Yeah. that sits right along the edge of that. You don't have to worry about that with optimal car wax. It will yeah. not dry on white. Um, I mean, like Levi said, though, worst case scenario, it dries on. It's just a little stiffer to get off. So that's why it's, it's just as, as easy as he said. You simply spray it on wipe it off. You can use it as a drying aid like we mentioned earlier during the drying process where the car is wet itself and you can do a spray per panel and dry it into the car and you're done. And you've now waxed your car. You got a question somewhere? Um, yes. If you already have the coat coating on your car, does it complement that? Yeah. Kind of replace that? No, uh, it takes on the, so the beauty of the, so, so you're wondering, OptiCoat is a coating that Optimum Polymer Technologies created. Uh, it's a ceramic coating that goes over the top of it. It can only be installed by uh, certified installers here in the area. Um, but the beauty of the Car Wax and the Instant Detailer Gloss Enhancer is, is uh, it's complementary to it, and it's not going to hurt it. What it is going to do is change the surface tension of the coating. So if the coating is designed to shed water very quickly and not let water stick on it, and you put Car Wax on it, it's going to do what wax is going to do. Wax causes beading. So it's going to cause the water to, to bead on the surface. Some people love that. Even though they've got the coating, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to hurt the coating. It's not going to lessen the life of the coating. It's just going to change the surface tension. It can easily be changed back based on doing a decontamination <coughs> using Power Clean or yeah. uh, Ferrex, which is a, another decontaminant. Yeah? Uh, if, if, uh well, you can use Power Clean on the surface. Yeah. Uh, you can also, uh, again, dilute it. I'd like to do five to one uh, to degrease the paint, basically, as I call it, to remove any extra wax or sealants or anything like that that may be on it. Uh, but you can use that. We also have a product in the store called Ferex. That is a chemical iron-based decontamination. Uh, that you can spray on as well and wash off. Yeah. Um, and it will not only clear the surface, but it will also remove any iron particulates that have bonded from rail dust, uh, environmental fallout, things like that, that get on the surface and embed themselves into the paint. Yeah, so you, can, you can use traditional methods too. You can use like an IPA wipe down. You can use washing detergent if you yeah, want to. Yeah, you, you, can, you can get crazy with it. You can mix different things. We also have paint prep inside the store. Uh, that's another thing that will remove waxes and things like that. And so uh, one thing to kind of note as well, I mean, on top of everything we're talking about, 
One thing a lot of people don't realize is that paint on a microscopic level is not some flat surface, right? Everybody thinks paint is just flat and things can stick on top. Paint is actually very porous. When you look at it at a microscopic level, it's like Swiss cheese. It has divots, it has dents, it has all sorts of things in it. And basically, when it comes to these products, when it comes to polymer, pre polymer products and it comes to decontamination, whether you're claying or iron decontamination, power clean, you know, the idea is to clean out those divots and to clean out those cracks and crevices in the paint and replace those with some type of protection. Wax, for example, or just using traditional O&R and having those polymers stack on top of each other within those cracks and crevices to fill in that layer and to basically add protection yeah. and shine. Because remember, you know, shine is everything that we're seeing. Gloss and all of that is what you're seeing on the surface and you're seeing light bounce off of each other. If you have cracks and crevices in the paint or you have contamination on the surface, that's going to drastically uh, reduce the amount of gloss that you have on the paint. So when you see a car that's brand new off the showroom, Sometimes those aren't as decontaminated as you would think, and those have to be buffed, those have to be cleaned out. Especially but, if you think about the, their travel or their journey. Yeah. You know, they, they usually sit out in the lot at the manufacturer's facility until it's ready to be delivered, and then it's put usually in a container or cargo like these cars, when they come over from Germany, they're put in container ships. Those container ships are full of iron, and they just sit and oxidize in hot and cold cycles, and particulates fall on them. Then guys that maybe don't know what they're doing, wash and clean the cars and give them to you. Uh, so there are some guys, some, some places that learn this stuff very quickly and try to deliver the best possible uh, so vehicle. A showroom finish isn't always the best finish, okay? I just want to say that right now. When you buy a new car, that is not the best it could look. It yeah. could look a lot better than that, and that's why a lot of people, right off the bat, right when they buy a new car, they take it in for a paint correction, they do a paint correction themselves, and then typically they'll wrap it in a clear rock or add some type of uh, ceramic coating onto it just to keep uh, those swirls and micro marring from occurring right off the bat because you know you have your paint, this is your investment, you want to protect it and that's uh, important, especially for you guys with your cars and your, you know, you guys being Porsche owners, uh, that's extremely important for you to have classic cars. You know, paint is everything when it comes to the car's value. If you find out that a panel had been resprayed or repainted, that can reduce the car's value. And so, when you have original paint, you want to take care of it the best you can. And I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, paint is extremely important. It may not may not be right off the bat when you look at a car, but for somebody that is appraising a car or um, a real enthusiast that's going to look things over, I mean, they can use that to their advantage when either buying or selling the car, saying, yeah. look at the paint. Well, and that goes back to concourse level judging. Yeah, There's yeah. Different, different uh, standards uh, than the normal car show. Yeah, so, way different standards, uh, yes. Next is our instant detailer gloss enhancer. This is a quick detail spray. This is awesome to use for just when you're, you finish washing the car in between washes, or say you wash the car, You've driven to, let's say, the Oktoberfest car show, and it's just slightly dusty because you drove through some leaves and stuff, and you need to just wipe the car down and make it pop. That's what this product does. This has gloss enhancers in it, which instantaneously, just like the name, uh, glows. It's crazy. Yeah. The paint just pops very, very quickly. Where car wax, you spray it on the paint, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for it to fully activate into the finish to where you start, you come back out and you're like, oh, that's noticeably shinier. Uh, this product instantaneously can, can uh, bring out that clarity and that gloss. Uh, what's great about it, you can spray this there and you can put this on top of it. Yeah. Not gonna affect it. Uh, it's just gonna make it shinier, uh, which is always fun. Yeah, so take a good look at what you're seeing here, right? This is a dirty car, we're gonna clean this and there's going to be a uh, and we're going to have everybody up here. Pretty and big difference. You guys that want to spray this stuff on this car, you're more welcome to. Yeah. Totally we want to be a hands-on thing. Make it so. fun, not make it too formal. And so, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we have one more thing yeah. here. And then this is Optibon tire gel. So what most of you need to remember is that tire dressings. Again, some have silicones, have uh, petroleum distillates in it. They have things that are designed to make the tires really, really shiny, but they're not good for the tire. Uh, Armor all, for example, is not good for your tires. Um, just like it's not good for your plastics because of the petroleum distillates in it. This product is specifically designed to bond with rubber. And what's crazy about it is that once the tires have been put on, have this product has been put on tires, and you go and find another tire dressing, say from AutoZone or 
Chucks or O'Reilly's and you go to, to put that on, the tire will reject yeah. that prop because it wants OptiBond tire gel. Once it bonds with the rubber, I guarantee you, once it bonds with the rubber, it stays on the surface. Um, and then more and more, the, the, the more and more times that you put it on, the deeper and deeper and deeper the, the shine and the protection is. This can be a matte finish. So for those of you that don't like your tires super shiny and glossy, you just put it on and then wipe it off. Uh, for those of you that want them, want the uh, what we refer to as the glazed donut look, you can put multiple coats of this product on the tires, and it'll it it will continue and continue and continue to shine and shine and shine and get deeper. The other great thing, this has a very long life on the tires. So I've been able to get realistically daily driving every single day and washing weekly. I can get about six weeks of life in my tires before I have to reapply the product again. And when I wash it with O&R, it doesn't affect the shine. So I can use O&R to wipe, wipe the dirt and dust off the wheels and tires and not affect the shine on the tires. So those are the products. This is our IK sprayer. Sorry, go ahead. Sure. Um, can you use that on your like, door jams and the rubber around the windows? You can. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. It's yeah. just a little too greasy. Okay. Uh, instant detailer, gloss and answer, or car wax. I recommend to put around your rubber and door jams. Okay. Uh, we have another product, OptiSeal that uh, we're not going to demo today, but you can do that as well, and that will also protect. Yeah. Uh, the reason is, these are all, like I said, they're all substantive polymers, so the way Dr. G envisioned it is O&R is going to be a great protectant on your rubber and plastic and leather and vinyl as well, uh, and you can use these as complements on the exterior stuff, uh, but for automotive tires, this is, the, this is what you need. Uh, most people do use silicones and things like that to try and uh, fix your trim and, thing, and things like that temporarily, temporarily yeah. but realistically if, if your car's fresh and new just putting car wax on it is going to provide all that UV protection and UV stabilization. Yes. Yeah. Am I also using my O&R to use inside the car in a spray bottle and then that instant detailer for inside as well? Yep, yeah, and it's totally safe on the leather and plastics and things which is yeah. another neat feature of that is that it can do all that which I really like because for myself this is a little side story when I would come home to wash my wife's car I would either have to take my kids with me to go to the car wash which I hated doing because I don't like causing kids? damage you to my like car <laughs> I don't like my kids so like, yeah. he likes it. I, like, I don't like my kids so I take them to the car wash I'd scream I'd cry they uh no, I take it to the car wash, one just to show them, but I hated seeing my car come out because at the time I had a black minivan that I had completely corrected and coated. But in the instance of time on a Saturday when you're trying to run a business and your wife wants you back and you need, you've got your honeydew list and things, I'd run it through the car wash a couple times. One, for testing for myself, just because I want to see how much a car wash scratches, and I'd use different car washes. Uh, second, I could go to my shop and wash my car. Problem was, I'd get to my shop, I'd start washing my car, I'd notice something, I'd start, I'd be like, I got my stuff here, I'll, clean it. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Next thing I know, three hours have gone by, and my wife's going, where are you? We still have this, 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 and this to do. So for me, it was, it was frustrating because I like taking care of our cars, but I didn't have a good option. Then, when I learned about Optimum products and started using them, I was able to transfer my normal weekly wash routine of my wife's vehicle I could do it at home, in the garage, without bringing a hose into my garage, without bringing anything that I, you know, that would have caused, because I have a detached garage and I didn't like dragging a hose through. Uh, <laughs> being able to do this all out of a bucket, I could wash my car, I could protect my car, I could clean my leather, my door panels, my dashboard, I could clean all that stuff in my, in my garage in the middle of winter, which was an amazing situation. And in the springtime, you just bring my kids out, open the garage door, they go ride their bikes, they're playing in the garage, I'm washing the car, my wife's happy because she's got a clean car, and, and uh, I got to spend some time with my kids, which is always fun. So, um, and it's all EPA certified and EPA friendly. That was the other thing. When Dr. G developed this product line, his children were very young. They were my kid's age. I got a three-year-old and a six-year-old. And one of the issues he had that he noticed was how caustic and damaging lots and lots of automotive car care products are. He wanted something safe. He wanted something that his kids that were at that age, they're teenagers now, uh, 
could put their hands in the bucket just because they're playing around and not be hurt. Uh, as a detailer of 20 years, I've used lots of really bad chemicals, lots of really dangerous chemicals, and that was one of the reasons I started looking for a better line of products, a better line of uh, uh, safer chemicals. One, because I have small kids, 40 years old and I've got little kids, so uh, I need to be able to be there for them and not get some sort of weird environmental disease because I've washed my hands with lacquer thinner for 20 years. So, yeah. Uh, two questions. Uh, so the spray wax is okay for the plastic black parts? Yeah, on the exterior of the vehicle. Yep. Doesn't have a lot of <laughs> Nope. Nope. And what's your opinion on blow drying the car? Uh, you can blow dry the car too. It's totally fine. That's actually the safest way because you're not uh, touching the vehicle. You're, you're causing the least amount of touching to the vehicle as possible. So if you've got a blow dryer, uh, that's totally fine. You're still going to have water that you need to, to pick up. And in that instance, it's always good to finish and walk, walk around with either the car wax or the instant detailer uh, to touch up any of your leftover drips and runs and things like that. Yes. So. Yeah, just a short question about the, the UV uh, protection aspect of the wax. Are we looking at 70, 80, 90% or, you know, what? Well, it depends on, it depends on one, how far the uh, wax, the uh, product has deteriorated, the uh, UV protection in the clear. Uh, UV protection in clear coat has a five-year half-life, so after five years, it de degrades by 50%. So the first five years, your car's fine, it's not going to hurt anything, but after that, it starts to dissipate a lot quicker. The goal of this product is to keep that level at 100%, uh, but if you're starting with 50%, you're not going to get 100% back out of it. It's not going to bring back stuff that is already lost, but it yeah. is going to help protect in the sense of uh, being able to prolong it. You can uh, keep it somewhat safer. Yeah. You might want to repeat the question because of uh, Facebook. And oh, they wanted to? What was the? Yeah. Okay. Basically talking about the UV protection. Uh, when you have a brand new car, if you're using this product, you'll be able to keep it at 100% uh, because of the UV half-life of five years. Uh, you continue to use this product, it'll be able to uh, refresh itself. Uh, but once the UV has already caused the damage and started to enter into its half-life, this will help protect it and prolong it, uh, but it will not bring it back up to that 100%. Okay. Yeah? Because of the five-year half-life, what goes into that? What assumptions? That is Dr. G in and of, of himself knowing the chemical structure of clear coat. Does that assume that the vehicle's in the sun? That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the sun with no protection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I would like to know what are the products that you have there in front of you, which product could I spray on the front of my car to make it easier to get rid of the bugs after I go on a three-day drive? Yes. So put the car wax on before you go on your drive. Yeah. yeah. Put, Wipe. Whoop. And wipe yeah. the front end with the car wax. The car. So yeah, and that's what I always recommend. And my wife laughs at me whenever we go on road trips because I'll wash <laughs> and clean the car and then I'll reapply wax on there. She's like, "Why are you doing that?" It's because of bugs. Uh, so that's kind of the the, the reason by that. Then O and R is an amazing bug remover. Yes. So you spray it on the surface and let it sit for a little bit, and it'll it'll break down and and uh, break those bugs down and remove them very safely. Uh, yes. It's one of the best bug removers I've ever found to work. But which you is, mentioned the car wax. Uh, will protect it. Dries like cement though. Yeah, so if you spray it on and leave it, yeah, yeah it will. Okay. But what you want to do is spray it on and wipe it off. Yeah. But remember, because you're trying to change the surface tension of that the front of your car, right? You want to make it to where the bugs kind of like ski off the front rather than splatter. They're still on the gonna. Front. They're still gonna splatter. Yeah. Just parts. Of, just just a couple parts will hit. It's gonna. Yeah. It's gonna allow them to maybe bounce off a little easier. The parts that do splatter, it's gonna be a lot easier to clean. And like Levi said, you can use O and R. You can use Power Clean. You can so, use that on the front. Yeah. Uh, you, you have a couple different options. I mean, so we have an employee here who likes to, we'll, we'll say, he likes to keep his car covered in bugs. Yes. Uh, he calls them kills. Uh, it's a tally for himself. Uh, he's, he's, he's at not, the thousands right now. Yeah. I think. So we did a video, and we have it, where uh, we saw how many bugs were on his car, and it, it was atrocious and a nightmare. 
and uh, it was a little gross. Uh, but we used power clean to break through that because it was just, he didn't have paint, it was just bugs on the front yeah. of his car. Just, so he took about five or six road trips and just had a blast. Yeah. Um, and he was fine with it, he loved it, and he was very upset when he came out and noticed that I had removed all his, his kills, as he called it. Uh, but we were able to use power clean to break down the majority. Then the rest of them came off easily uh, with O&R and one of our little jersey scrubbers that we carry in the store. Uh, but with a towel, it works just fine. And so you can get all your bugs off, even if you have five or six uh, that are just on the surface and you're keeping your car clean. What I like about O&R is you can wipe it on the surface, set it on there, rub it with the towel, it comes off and it's not going to scratch it, which is the key. Um, I had tons of products where I'd rub the surface and I'd scratch the ever-living heck out of the paint. Dennis? Do you think uh, how the lizards react here is that you can use it and it's not really got sand and sand and it's not Yep. Yeah. It is, and if you don't have access to, if you don't have the ability to wash with hot water or warm water in your garage, yes, uh, that's why we have our sprayers, our pressure sprayers, so you can uh, mix up O&R, wash inside, use a pre-soak. We also have another product called OptiClean that I recommend as a pre-soak when in winter with ice and salt and things like that. Uh, you spray OptiClean on the surface, let that be its the, the pre-soak. It is a higher encapsulation and emulsion effect than O&R because it's a true waterless wash. So what we do is I spray that on the surface first, let that sit, then I come at it with hot water and O&R in a pump sprayer. And basically I'm kind of creating a, my very own pressure washer and hose situation, uh, but I'm able to do it in my garage with much less water. So I'm not soaking everything. Then I'll use multiple towels. And what I try to do is do a top down method. So I'm bringing the dirtiest spots at the very bottom. So I'm starting at the top where the cleanest is. And I work section to section, changing out towels. You have to be delicate. If you're gonna try and wash a car without a pressure washer or a hose in your garage, and it's a very filthy car, there's a lot more work involved in it. But if your car has been like mine, they're washed every week. Rain or shine, sun, sleet, snow, all that stuff. And I don't have any issues just with hot O&R, hot water in a sprayer with O&R, and then uh, doing a pre-soak that way. So key is having that pre-soak. Yeah? So if one doesn't have time or one doesn't have the inclination, do you certify people to, to do? Yeah. Do this as well? Yep, there are a lot of shops in town that know how to wash with O&R, use O&R. Uh, we've got, there's three shops currently uh, that use O&R on a daily basis. Are they listed on your website? They aren't listed on our website, but they are available on the Optimum's website. Yes, so, yeah. It sounds like these kinds of products would be useful with the car wash facilities with the I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, that too. Yeah, you can use them in the, no one, no one in the car wash industry uses them yet uh, because uh, it's just hard sell for those. But I like using them in a, I've taken my van uh, to a self-serve wash and put one of my buckets and put hot warm O&R in there and I've used the pressure washer. I just pulled up on a nice day like today use the pressure washer to get all the dirt and heavy stuff on, and then I've got a bucket of hot water, and I wash the car and dry it. Sometimes it's cold, and you just gotta get, you know, grit and bear it and get it done, but, uh, but as to the car wash industry itself, uh, in Dubai and Saudi Arabia, there are car washes that are starting to use O&R, not here yet. Uh, but, yeah, 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 that's the only problem. So yeah. locally there isn't anybody that It's a does short it. drive. Yes. But there are detail shops here that you can call and, and they've got reasonable prices for just a car wash yeah. that you can do and they can do an O&R wash for you. Yeah? So I can say when I went on a road trip this summer, I took my own bucket, my own couple products, my own towel, 
that would first get in the front of my car every few stops, like every six hours. It was like a week trip on the coast, but I would go to the drive through walk, yep. clearly hose it down, and just do the rest with it because I didn't want the bug sitting on there for two weeks. Windows. What about exterior windows? Do you have something that will help keep them? Or like a rain X type of thing? Yeah, without yep. those permanent blocks that you can put on. The yeah. car wax is great okay. for that. Okay. Uh, we've got OptiSeal as well, but car wax, realistically, because you can spray it on your glass, you can spray it on everything. Okay. It's yeah. basically the easiest to cover all that. Remember, it goes back to changing the surface tension, right? Like we talked about earlier. Same thing, spraying that on your glass um, and then allowing that water to just bead off and, and, and fall off versus. Yeah. Accumulate and on the optimums, web, optimum car care, uh, they have us. They also have listed the detailers that do provide the coatings for all that kind of stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> you can use car wax on it. You're all right. Yeah, it's not going to harm it. Uh, those of you that do have Expel uh, Clear Bra or PPF on the front of your vehicle, uh, prior to last year, because Optimum created their own PPF. Uh, that actually has its substantial polymers built into it. Uh, Expel recommended only Optimum products uh, for care of their of their clear bra. So, you know, yeah. How long would you say it takes to like rain or something? Dirty. How long? If it's, if it's rain from the sky, you're not going to have any issues. If it's sprinklers from your neighbor's sprinklers or work or something like that, you don't have long, especially on a hot day. So if it's a week of 110 degree weather and you come out the first day, let's say you go to work and you park near a sprinkler and you don't, didn't know and they turned it on in the middle of the afternoon for no reason, uh, you only have you know, usually about a week to get that off before it starts to cause etching. Especially based on temperature. So if you think about it, what a water spot is, is just a magnifying glass on your paint surface. So for those of you that ever had a ceramic cooktop, uh, you spill water on it, it boils that water really quickly and then leaves that little etch. That's what is exactly happening to the paint surface on your car when water hits it on a hot day. So if it's 105 out in the middle of July, and the sprinklers hit it in the middle of the day, those water spotlets, droplets are sitting on the surface as the sun is beating down and the sun is basically boiling that water into the paint. So you are going to get that kind of level of etching. But it's the minerals that stay on that surface that cause the etching. So the longer those minerals stay on the surface, the, long, the harder it is to get those etchings out. I've had customers that would show up and go, hey, I, I got water spots on my car, I need these off. Well, when did you get them? I don't know, 10 years ago? <laughs> or, or two years ago? And it's like, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. And they go, well, I, you know, I, gotta, I, I just got busy, sorry. You know, it's, all of a sudden, it's not an issue to them. But when I get into the paint on a microscopic level, I can't do anything about it. I can remove all the mineral deposits themselves, but once that paint gets etched, it causes a divot in there that will always be there. Yeah. That can only be filled by a new clear coat. Yeah. Uh, that, so that's, that or you have to polish off the existing clear coat around it. And, and you may not even deeper. get in there. And you may not even get to it. Yeah, and that's another thing. I mean, with uh, water spot etchings and then bird poop, bird poop etchings, you have uh, little time to, to fix that. So I know there's people out there that might see a bird dropping and they say, okay, I'm, I'm going to get it later. You know, a day passes, I'm going to get it later. A day passes, I'm going to get it later. Oh, I'm going to the car wash next week anyways. It'll, it'll wait till then. Uh, that will etch your paint. And once it's actually removed under the right lighting, say if the sun hits it perfectly or you're under some nice shop lighting, you'll see a big splatter mark that is now etched in the paint and is now burned through uh, it's very your clear or has basically caused your paint underneath your clear to bubble up and cause some type of weird, uh, I don't know, like I don't know how to really describe it, like kind of like a splatter mark yeah. that's just there permanently. And so same thing with a water spot, you're going to see a bunch of little circular marks everywhere. And uh, you may not see it to the naked eye, you know, wipe it off, you think it's good, but under certain light you'll see it, kind of same thing with swirl marks, or uh, we have these fancy lights we're going to show you here in a little bit called scan grip lights, and they, uh, 
They are the uh, end all be all of. You think of, you have nice paint? Yeah. Put them under a scanner. <laughs> they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll make you know, make they'll you feel pretty bad about your paint. They'll make you feel very happy. Yeah. <laughs> there. Um, so for a few of us that have uh, either a vinyl wrap or second or our car wrap in a different, uh, either a matte yep. finish or you know contrasting uh, sticker or something like that over second or car. Any any concerns with those those two different surfaces? Obviously nope. You have the paint yeah, no, that's the great thing. O and R safe for all types, including matte finishes and vinyl. Uh, instant detailer, gloss enhancer, and car wax will add a little bit of sheen to a matte surface. Uh, light, light sheen. Uh, very light I mean, very sheen. Light. We just did a, uh, we were filming a Wash Wednesday with Anthony uh, at Lupo Motors uh, recently, and they have a matte silver uh, Mercedes S63. AMG S63. Yes. And it has that frozen silver paint, as they call it. Uh, which is the mat, and we were able to utilize uh, O and R. We washed it with that, and then, uh, we used Opti Seal, which is technically a shinier sealant than this, on it, and had no issues. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, what if you have several coats of a wax? You can start using the spot. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not gonna hurt anything. You could do, I mean, if you want to start from scratch, you, you can do that, and you can do a decontamination wash, you can use Power Clean, Ferrex, you can do an IPA wipe down before you start this to hopefully clear out any of the old stuff, um, especially doing like a clay uh, and claying the car, that could help as well, uh, just to give you a good finish and to yeah. start right off the bat with But it's these. not going to harm anything that you have already on the surface. No, yeah. So, and you that's one of, the, one of my favorite things about this product line is it doesn't, it's so easy and simple to use. Anybody can use it. Uh, I've got my three-year-old out there, and he's wiped the car down with, sprayed car wax down and followed it up with a towel. And haven't had any issues. I've had to go back and, you know, hit the spots he missed, but uh, I don't have any problems with the way that it's applied. You know, there's tons of products out there where you spray it on the surface, and you wipe, 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 and you just can't. Like, it's not, I feel like I'm smearing vegetable oil all over my car. What the heck? So, uh, that's what's nice about these products. They, they uh, dissipate very quickly. So, when you're wiping, you're, you're good to go. So, um, well, with that, we're going to have you guys. You can well, come you on up. Talk about some microfiber really quick? Oh, yeah, we need to do that. I was going to say, we're a microfiber company. We probably <laughs> should give you a little bit of education on the microfiber. Come up we're, we're, here, we're, here, we're here pitching these guys. But, um, no, so in conjunction with using this stuff, obviously uh, microfiber is going to be key in using this product. Um, basically, you wouldn't want to be using this stuff with a bath towel because like Levi said, I mean, it really kind of comes down to you physically touching the surface, touching the paint and things like that. And if you're not using uh, a proper media, whether it's a towel or um, you know, whether it's a mitt, uh, it, you, know, you could inflict damage. And so uh, us being the rag company, we pride ourselves in having the best microfiber in the world. And uh, we really try to stay, uh, I mean, on top of, I mean, basically not stay on top of it, be the next step of where microfiber is going and always have that, uh, that, that, I guess, that, yep. that technology and that advanced. Yeah, so uh, a little approach. bit about us. Like I said, we've been around since 1999. We're one of the largest and oldest microfiber manufacturers in the world. Uh, we uh, have uh, factories in China and South Korea. And so we have a mixture of towels from those factories that are some of our favorites. Uh, key to knowing microfiber, I was explaining this to a gentleman earlier this morning, uh, you can go to Home Depot and pick up a bag of microfiber towels and flip the bag over and read the back of the bag. It should tell you the country of origin, where they're from, and you know, maybe it will teach you the content of the microfiber. All microfiber is a mixture of polyester and polyamide. Uh, now the, the ratio of that is what is the main source of the towel. Yeah. So in some instances in, at Home Depot, I've seen 95-5 blends. So 95% polyester, 5% polyamide. Our towels are 80-20 and 70-30. So they're 70% polyester, 30% polyamide. A higher polyamide count aids in softness and absorbency. The polyester gives the structure and the, the strength to the towel, but it doesn't provide any absorbency. So if you have a high polyester content, you're just gonna push water around. Mm, yes. uh, you're not actually gonna, it's not gonna get drawn up into the towel. It's the polyamide content that draws that up. So, on all our South Korean manufactured towels, they are all a 70-30 blend. And on our Chinese uh, factories, we have a mixture of 80-20 and 70-30. 80-20 is still a 
great, great value, and 90% of the market is still 80-20. Uh, but we held the highest level, uh, the most 70-30 uh, blended towels in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why, why do you go overseas for these? Why aren't, why aren't they manufactured in the U.S.? There is no it's manufacturer not, in the U.S. for microfiber. It's because... Just uh, it's not a lot of stuff. Jeff, or, cost. I mean, huh? would you be willing to pay thirty bucks for a towel we can sell? Well, for but six? but the difference would be maybe a, a cost. The labor cost would be lower in China or South We've Korea. We've tried. Right? There's been a number of businesses. We would love to be the first. Oh. Uh, it takes. You have to have a building that's five stories tall for the yarn. So there's millions of dollars at stake mm -hmm. to build the yarn. First, you have to have the yarn manufacturer. What a lot of businesses are starting to do is they're there's maybe a couple where they can bring the fiber in, but they're basically building the towel overseas and then they bring it on in. Um, I would, like I say, I would love to be the first. We do as much as we can. I have 17 employees. We package, we design, we do everything here that we possibly can. It goes out of the world. Yeah, that's true. It comes, we, comes here first. We're yeah. a huge exporter. We ship to 50 countries in the world. Uh, we have distributors in, in throughout the. Uh, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Russia, Russia Europe, yeah. all Australia, all yeah. over the world. I, I, I wasn't trying to be judgmental or anything. Oh, no, no. It's a good question. It's a good question. You know, what are the barriers to, to it's, manufacture it's and something like that? I, I don't have the 10, and, 20, 30 million dollars to build a facility. But there would be an opportunity maybe for somebody if they had, if, if they yeah. wanted to invest in something. Yeah, they want to. Yeah. It's, it comes down to the risk. If mm -hmm. you build the facility, it's kind of like the old build it, will they come? Yeah. yeah. And. You know, the labor, yeah, it's no secret, labor's cheaper in South, uh, South Korea and China. Um, we have competitors. It's a very, very competitive market. We are probably, for the quality, we're the highest quality, highest value. Nobody offers the same quality we do in the world for, the, for what you're getting for the price. And it's just a very, very competitive industry. Like I say, I would love to be the first. We've tried to do a few other things just to get that. There's a few products that we can source from the U.S., and they bomb. People will not pay the money. <clears throat> and so, like I said, I would love to. I just I don't have that kind of funds to invest, yeah. and nobody else does. Yeah. They have the longest running experience over there. They've yeah. been doing this, you know, since the 90s. Since the 90s, and, uh, and they know their stuff. And so the most qualified for it, they have the facility. The employees, um, and then they're also able to uh, obviously get the yarn too. And the yarn is what, uh, like Levi was saying, it all comes down to the blend. Whether it's a seventy thirty blend, eighty twenty, and we always buy the best yarn we can possibly yeah, we buy. Some of the highest. Yeah. Uh, well, there, there's there's a point of diminishing percent is is the perfect blend seventy thirty. 70% polyester, 30% polyamide. For detailing, it's, it's, it's the perfect mix. Yeah. Um, it becomes a different product. It has yeah. different product characteristics that aren't necessarily uh, optimized for, um, for auto detailing and for other purposes. Otherwise, yeah. you're right. It's yeah. always, that's another great that question, line. but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have one more. Yeah. Care and maintenance of these of the microfiber towels. That's, I mean, that's something that's really important. We do want to cover because um, really care and maintenance. I mean that that it's can totally different than your normal. Yeah, it's totally towel. different than your normal towel, and that can really uh, I guess determine whether this towel is going to last you a couple months or is it going to last you five years. And so um, let me okay, let me ask you. Do you have any microfibers? Yes. How do you wash them right now? Uh, mm. Probably Did, the wrong way. It's okay. You can let us know. That's why I'm asking. Okay, I was going to say, if you want to let us know, I mean, um, is I mean, so who here is actually using microfiber out of everybody? Who's using a bath towel? Come on, be honest. Okay, okay, there we go. That's, that's all right. That's all right. It's all right, and that's why we're here today. So um, when it comes to care and maintenance of the towel, it's going to be extremely important. So um, you're going to want to use a free and clear detergent first off. You're going to use a liquid detergent, none of the powdered stuff. Because you remember those granules, those take those actually take multiple cycles to uh, to well, rinse out. In, in main thing first, yeah. think about microfiber. The logo of our business is these cross section of a microfiber strand. So it's got all these little fingers all the way around. And when you touch microfiber, those of you that have touched it, my wife touches it and goes, "I did not know. I don't like it. It grabs back. It feels weird. I don't. I don't like the way. I don't want to touch those towels." So for what that is, is these fingers grabbing back. So 
these fingers are designed to grab and pull and lift and pull things into the fiber. So if you're using a powdered detergent, it's going to pull those fibers, those, those detergent molecules back into the fibers, which won't ever fully break down, which then gives you basically sand in your towel. Yeah. So, so that's the key first is liquid detergent, uh, free and clear. So no dyes, no fragrances, um, uh, no fabric softeners, basically is the main thing is the fabric softener part. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, that allows you to, to wash the properly. You can use cold or warm, never hot. Uh, microfiber, because again, polyester and polyamide, you mix those two together, it's plastic, basically. Plastic that's so fine that it feels soft, yeah. in, in a nutshell. And that plastic melts at 140 degrees. Most of your water heaters in your homes are set from the factory at 140 degrees or higher. Some people crank theirs up because they like hot water. Um, so if you're washing hot, you will melt your fibers. And it's not going to be like a chunk of plastic in your washer or dryer no, or anything no, like no, that. Yeah. It's but just they, the fibers themselves those, will collapse yeah. on each other. So what I say is it's, think of it as a hand with fingers. When you melt those fibers, they do this. Yeah. If you ever have microfiber towels that start off looking good, but then after a couple washes or a couple drying sessions, you kind of see that it gets clumpy. kind of clumpy looking and it kind of collects lint and it collects other things and just doesn't look right, that's because of the high heat. Yeah. So. You've washed free and clear, either cold or warm. Uh, the other thing we recommend is you add four ounces of distilled white vinegar into your bleach port on your washing machine. The key to that is that in the bleach port, releases during your rinse cycle. So if you don't have one of those, you just put it in during the rinse cycle. You put that half a cup of vinegar in the rinse water. Uh, that will help remove any of the waxes, sealants, polymers, anything like that that get stuck to the towel still that don't get released in the, during the soap uh, portion of the wash. Then low, dry, low heat dry. So no high heat. Again, the key is to not hit that 140 degree mark because it'll burn the towels. So, Delicate, knit, low heat, yeah. Any validity to the products on the market that are designed to wash the microfiber towels? They're all great. Uh, all the wash, uh, microfiber wash soaps are designed to clean microfiber without the need for using a uh, uh, using vinegar or using a detergent, a detergent yeah. a, another type of detergent. You just use that one product. Yeah, but uh, you know, we are the, working on yeah. a on a microfiber detergent of our own um, and it's been in the works for the last couple of years so we are still testing still trying um, but that way we can give people an option when they buy our towels that we have the best detergent as well so uh, but again low heat dry no fabric softeners no dryer sheets none of those because the fabric softeners and the dryer sheets act as a winter glove basically over the fibers so you lose that de the dexterity of the fibers themselves, so yeah. when you add a fabric softener to it. Yeah, and a dryer sheet will definitely stick to a microfiber towel, yeah. and it'll just stay on that microfiber <laughs> towel yeah, in tumble it. and not touch anything else. But um, so to start giving you guys like a rundown of the towels, so uh, we were the first company to create a towel called the Eagle Edgeless, and so we have a couple over here on this rack. And but blue and orange towels. Yes. Um, yeah, so the Eagle Edgeless. It's to be Bronco color. <laughs> <laughs> so what that's called, it's called a circular knit weave. And so uh, that weave is considered the safest uh, weave that you can get on a microfiber towel. And that's where it's going to have this almost shag carpet look and feel to it. And not only is it soft, but it works extremely well at pulling dirt and pulling things up from the surface and bringing it up into the towel versus a traditional terry style towel. And when I say terry, people are like, terry, doesn't that mean cotton? No, terry is just the style of the weave on the towel. And so we have plenty of terry towels that are absolutely awesome and we love them for other things. Um, these, for example, are for wheels themselves. But when it comes to these circular knit weave towels, these are like the cream of the crop. These are the best of the best and I've done so much testing on these towels and we are the first ones to have these towels. Um, every other towel you see that looks like this um, is basically a, It's not from us, it's a copy of ours. It's a copy of ours, There's yeah. a reason why there's a ton of blue and orange towels all around the world because we actually we, we had the blue well over 10 years ago. Uh, the orange we added because we were trying to appeal to the motorcycle crowd so I picked yeah. out the, you know, we picked the Pantone color for Harley and we can't call it a Harley towel but we just kind of hit that orange and then it kind of caught on. All of a sudden, everybody's carrying blue and orange towels, but they can't match up to ours, and I can go into the science of why. 
but uh, we are actually in the process in about one month from now. I've got a container on its way, left uh, a couple days ago, and it, it was a little risky because this is our flagship towel. And so we decided to make a change. Uh, when the opportunity came, we've been working with the factory for quite a while, and we were able to take it up yet another notch. And uh, it's going to be a phenomenal towel. I'll, I'll bring some samples down so you guys can see those. We, we have some early, uh, early releases of those. But uh, for right now, for today, we're actually going to have these uh, 20 bucks for five of them. Uh, you can mix and match your colors or whatever. But normally they're, they're I think, five and a half bucks or so a piece. But we got them for four bucks a piece while you guys are here. And, uh, and then what's in the them. kit is our new Eagle 600. So it's like our Eagle Edgeless, the blue and orange, but it's a 100 GSM heavier. GSM is the next part of the equation of microfiber. That means grams per square meter. That is the weight of the towel or density of the fibers in it. So you can have a towel that's a, a 200 GSM, which is a very thin towel. These are 245s, so they're very thin towels, you can kind of see how much, uh, and then that's a 600 GSM, so it's a lot, lot thicker. Uh, GSM has nothing to do with whether the towel is soft or not. It is yeah. strictly the weight of the towel and the density of the fibers. We can have a thin towel like this that looks very thin, feels very thin, but is actually very dense. This is what, 400 and 490, 490 GSM. Yeah. So it comes almost down to, to weight as well. So yeah. not just the thickness, it comes down to really just the overall weight and how dense it is. I mean, this right here is considered to be one of our most absorbent style of towels. This is a traditional waffle weave in a 70-30 Korean blend. So this towel right here, it makes an insanely good drying towel. And we have a couple other towels inside as well that have some different weaves uh, that are great for drying as well. But kind of what I wanted to get back to on the circular knit weave. And this is something that we picked out specifically for you guys um, in, your, in your cars. So when it comes down to this weave, this is, like I said, the safest weave. I'm 220 pounds. I have taken this towel dry to a dry corrected hood. I mean, meaning a hood that had no swirls or no scratches on it. I had, had a fresh polish on it. I took this and I put all 220 pounds of my weight and scrubbed as hard as I could for about four to five minutes. I wanted, because I wanted to see what it was going to do. It was actually Dane's hood, wherever he's at. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, Dane. But, uh, but he, he knew I was doing that, and he knew what I was doing, and, and he was okay with that. And I wanted to see, you know, realistically, in comparison to another towel in the market, which I had next to me, how much damage it can do. And when I pulled it off, I was absolutely amazed um, at the result, because... I did have a little bit of micro marring, and by micro marring, I mean it was very slight uh, spiderweb style, uh, little scratches in there. But I'm talking, remember, dry towel, 220 pounds, pushing as hard as I can. I grabbed my polisher with the finessing pad, a light polish. I did two passes, scratches were gone, or I guess swirls were gone. So, and that's insane for what that is. And so, in comparison to the other towel that I was testing, I left some pretty deep gouges inside of Dane's paint, and I don't know if he knows that or not. So, sorry, Dane. Um, Actually, I, gonna, I, I, I think I fixed him. I was going to say, Matt, I'm, I apologize. Yeah. I'm putting you on the spot. But when we first got this towel, I think we'd had it like less than 24 hours. And Levi and Matt have worked together for many, many years. Uh, Matt's over here in the corner. He runs... Uh, well, he'll be running a new shop here pretty soon. Okay. All right. So... He, he uh, Levi handed off one of the 600 stones because he was working. You can you can give more of the details about what you were. It was a Porsche, wasn't it? It was an 86 Martin, and uh, every other towel that I had was actually made from Porsche towels. Yeah. And uh, That was one of our first validations because we, we put everything through extensive testing. We want to make sure because there's... Now we sent them to guys all over the country. All over the world. We so, sent them off yeah, to Europe. We and, sent them to Europe and Canada. And, yeah. and we, get, we, we have a test team that, that goes through all this stuff. So not only do Anthony and I play with it, but we send it to guys locally here, but then we also send it to guys all over the country to try it. I want to know what it's going to do before we're going to sell it to customers. Yeah. So. 
we do tons of testing. So, um, but we handpicked everything. Like I said, to keep in mind that you know you guys may have soft paint. You're wanting the best of the best. You guys don't want to cheap out on any of these areas, and we wanted to give you the best. So, uh, following that um, is going to be our drying towel that we picked out. This is called the Platinum Pluffle. This is going to be a combination of the fibers from a circular knit weave and the absorbency of a waffle weave. So basically this is like these two had a baby and created this. Uh, two small towels created a big towel, that doesn't make sense. But um, so, so anyways, this towel is not just extremely absorbent, but it is super soft and super safe on all paint. And this towel works so well with a drying aid. It works great without a drying aid. With o and it's like a match made in heaven. And so on top you have that circular knit weave. Below that you have the waffle weave. So you're getting the initial soft bite, I guess you could say, of the towel. Then underneath it you're getting the absorbency. Following around the outside edge of the platinum pluffle is going to be um, a butter soft suede edge. It's a 70-30 blend as well. So even if the edge were to touch the paint, you have nothing to worry about. And that leading edge is absorbent. So if you're ever getting into tight cracks and crevices, whether it's around the hood, whether it's around uh, the air ducts back there, you could use the leading edge of this towel and it will absorb. It's not going to just push water around. So on top of that, we have a couple other towels here. We got some traditional terry style weaves. We got one that's a 70-30 blend that's going to be meant for uh, metal polishing. We have this 245 right here, which I like for tight cracks, crevices wheels. Um, I consider any of my dark towels, at least in my opinion, besides this one, as my, as my dirty towels, right? Because they're getting dirty, you know they're going to get dirty. You don't want to take a white towel to your dirty wheels because now you have a dirty towel forever, you know, until you wash it and it may still have some light staining on it. So we like going with black. So we like going with black. This makes it easier. And dark spots, dirty spots. Makes me feel better. I'm, I'm, I, I'm a bit OCD, and so I, I like using proper stuff. So um, our wash media for today, we chose our Minx Royale. So what this is, is this is a coral weave. Very similar to the circular knit weave. Coral um, fleece. Coral fleece weave, sorry. So this is going to be uh, a lot tighter of a weave uh, than the circular knit weave, meaning the fibers are really close together, but it may be our softest towel. I would arguably say that it yeah. is our, currently yeah. our softest towel until we get our new Eagle 500s that I think may take the... Uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they, yeah they, they battle each other. But um, this right here is going to be our wash media. When I, what I mean by wash media is this is going to be our applicator of our own R. This is going to wash the car. replace our wash mitt. We are going to be using multiple of these towels. And when you use multiple towels in a bucket of O&R, not only does that make the wash safer because you're not taking the same media, dunking it in the, you know, in the bucket, hoping it releases the dirt, and taking it back in the car. You could put this back in the bucket, pull out a different towel, right, why that soaks and releases uh, the dirt from the towel. Use the other towel, put that back in the bucket, pull out a different towel, and you can go through multiple towels if you choose to do so. So, uh, and you guys will see what I mean. Once you put this in water, it has it, a... It becomes very spongy. Very spongy. Because has of the way the fleece is on it, it's very, very slick spongy. feel. Yeah. You, you'll, see what, you'll see what I mean. The first time you touch it, you'll be maybe a little weirded out. I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 it feels extremely soft. Yes? So I have the red sponge. Yeah, the big red, the big red sponge. we got that yeah. as well. We're going to demo that. That wouldn't replace that? Nope. No, no. That's just another option. I mean, it's... There's... Guys, there's a million different ways to wash your car. I, there's, you, can, you can do it so many different ways. The way we're teaching you is a way that's proven to be safe and effective, efficient, um, be low cost, and provide the big red an sponge. awesome look. So this is an optimum design product uh, known as the Big Red Sponge. It's a Big Red Sponge. Uh, it is a, uh, made out of uh, the highest quality European foam you could find on the market. Um, and it's crisscross cut on both sides uh, so that it can allow you to lift up that dirt. It's super soft. It's not going to harm the finish. In fact, this year they came out with an even softer one called the Big Gold Sponge. Um, and it's gold and it's even softer than the Red Sponge. Um, but what's great about this, this tool is it's specifically designed to be used with O&R. Um, O&R and O&R only. Yeah, and O&R only. It also has to live in the O&R. So for some of you that are kind of don't want to, aren't, aren't on the O&R train yet, uh, once you get into it, that's, this is kind of the, uh, ed, this is a beginner intermediate, this gets more intermediate advanced uh, with this product. Yeah, mastering that is 
it t takes it takes a minute. You have to get used to it. Um, there's a break-in period. There's, there's a break-in period. Little things that go along. Once you get it down, you're gonna love it. You know, I know you love it back yeah. there. So, um, so going past that, we have a couple other things I wanted to show you. Tell you. anybody um, can use. So. I know you guys have all the reference pages on on the paper or on the tables there to look. But um, on so the we're also side, you'll see the products listed. On the other side, you'll see the uh, the sale two uh, two things we have there for the special sale. Yeah. So um, the mit the mittens. These are called our smitten mittens. These are. Uh, we're the first to do this. This is uh, uniquely ours. Yeah, uniquely ours. They are. They're a lot of fun, and they have a lot of good uses. So this right here is called the smitten drying mitten. And what this is is this is a combination of the platinum pluffle material, like I said before, that super safe drying material. And then on the back side we have a twist loop weave, um, which is considered to be the second, or at least I think the most absorbent. It's the most absorbent. The right most right absorbent. Right. I guess the waffle would, would be the second most absorbent. Um, so you have two extremely absorbent drying surfaces here. Again, held together with the 7030 Buttersoft suede edge. So this is going to be for your oddball drying areas or for areas that are hard to reach because we everybody that like using those for the lower parts, reaching up underneath, you know, spots of the car, getting in your vents, getting in spots that you don't want to jam a big towel. Into, or drop your towel or drop on the towel ground on the because ground. We, I, I, who, everybody's done that, right? You don't even have to raise your hand. I know everybody's probably dropped a towel or two. But this can get you into, into tight spots, get you into areas, and it works great with uh, doing a final life. So for those of you that use air to dry your car and you've got like a blower or something, these are great to use uh, with air with the sprayables just to... Get all those little drips and runs. And you use both sides or just the? You can use, you can both, use both sides. sides. You, it yeah. it's really just comes down to preference. This is going to be the most absorbent side, where this is going to be more we've of got, the plush. And we've got folks that finish. love these for their door jams. So door jams and, and uh, hood jams and things like that. There's two That's totally fun. different feels to it. Yeah. yeah. But, they're, but they're absolutely totally paint safe. Okay. But you're going to, one's the soft, fluffy, the one, you know, oh yeah, I want to touch that. The other one is just, it's kind of like, think of it like the new, the new material, the new trend. It, the, with the twist loops, they are so absorbent. Um, for those of you that are familiar with Rio's Garage, Rio's did their entire lineup, but I think they call it the, the PFM, PFM, the Pure Freaking Magic. What, um, and, and it's it's kind of the, the coming trend for uh, for microfiber. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean, to give you guys an idea, the twist loop we we have a towel called the Twist and Shout towel. Um, it's a big purple towel. It's got a butter soft suede edge. We dried an entire Ford Raptor um, with one towel. So. It's, could have done two. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we could have done another one. It, it's it's pretty insane. You guys can. We have one. I don't know if we have one on here. Yeah. Uh, that purple guy right there. Uh, an entire Ford Raptor. Like I'm not kidding when I say that. It we did. We it happened. And so uh, going into the next thing we have here is going to be our smitten glass mitten. So this is kind of the answer to everybody that uh, has that awkward motion when they're cleaning their inside glass with a towel and they're just kind of flinging it back and forth. I guess you guys know what I'm talking about when you're inside your window. This like here allows you to slide this on your hand, do your inside glass, and actually use that leading 70-30 butter soft suede edge to get into the smaller cracks and crevices. Whether you have window visors over your window and need to go up and underneath those, or if you're just going on the inside and you need to hit that odd area between the glass and the dash where that meets. Yep. So this is going to be a combination of the 70-30 Korean waffle weave, like this guy right here, and the combination of our 70-30 twist loop that we have um, on the back side of this one right here. Yep. So I think that wraps it up as far as towel goes. We also included oh, one other cool thing. This is called the Fender Defender. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite, yeah. favorite oddball items it's that we 70, have here. 30 micro suede. Yes. And it can be used for anything. Like you can set it up here. Maybe you set it on your workbench and you put your towels on it. Yeah. Maybe you use it when you're working on your car and you need something to. Lay over your fender or anything like that. Lay over your fender, lay over your door jams, lay over an area where you're reaching into the car or you need somewhere where you don't We've want to. We've got folks that buy these and use them in their detail shops uh, as entrances for their customers. So once they finish detailing the car, they lay this out so when you get in, you're not dragging your feet over the sill plates and stuff. Uh, we've got also got, them, got guys that use them. Uh, one guy uses them when he loads his groceries in and out of his Porsche. So yeah. he throws it over. He keeps it in the, in the front trunk and lays it over, and then re it's mostly because he, he likes to wear a belt buckle, and he's worried he's going to scratch the fender every time he gets it, so that's what he uses it for, is just to cover that. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, we did have so we did have this uh, marked as our one of our glass drying cows, and then following up with the 7030 premium glass cow. Now this is going to do uh, your, all your grunt work as far as absorbing the water, and this guy right here is going to give you your street <coughs> finish. So you follow up with this, and it's it's the best glass towel that we have. So, um, and last but not least, but we have our little uh, sponge applicators. They're wrapped in a microfiber terry uh, style material. And what we would do is we would use this with the OptiBond tire gel to simply apply it onto there and then rub that into the tire surface. And uh, we'll get hands on so you guys can try for yourself. So let's go ahead and we'll wrap up. I know a lot of you got the bathroom break. You want to grab a bite to eat, yep. some yeah, drink. Yeah. Uh, we'll, let's break for maybe five, ten minutes. Yep, yep. And then you guys get set up and uh, we'll get started. Good job. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, we're going to move the camera. Well, for one thing. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to move it probably up in the front corner looking back. Okay. Let's get that guy out of there. Yeah, you want to just walk it over to the side. Let's try... Maybe a little farther back too. Like that. Thank you. Yep. Alright guys, we're gonna figure out the best home for the camera on you.
We should be able to. I'll go check the stream.
that he had done being around this world was tragic, even it out. You know, that is one of my stand up people. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a delicate art. There's a lot of people trying to do something that's It's more about finding what the right compromise is.
Thank you for watching, and uh, what I'm going to do is, this is Dane by the way, I'm going to move the camera around the place so you can kind of see more what's going on. Uh, in addition to that, we will get to wash in the car once people have kind of settled a little bit, so there's going to be a little bit of a delay here while everybody's just going around chatting, but until that's over, we'll just kind of walk around and capture some of the action of what's going on. All right, guys, follow along. be the place to be. Yeah, you know what? Actually, guys, I'm going to park you right here so when the action starts, you'll see it. How high should I go? Right there? We'll do is we'll kind of let it sit here for a little bit and then when it gets close to actual action of us washing that's my SD card don't lose it but that's got your drone footage you're still on candid camera right in the face <laughs> all right yeah, we're, we're just streaming the whole thing I'm talking to the audience right now so basically we're gonna set the camera up right here to so capture the back corner of the vehicle for a little while while we're waiting and then when they start washing things we're actually gonna take the camera 
and we are going to capture a little bit of up close action. So we have freedom of movement with this thing. It's just going to take a second while we uh, do that. All right. You're standing in front of the big light, so it'll probably light up quite a bit when you move. Guys, still live. Yeah, it's been live the whole time. I'm running the entire thing. So, uh, now you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, it goes without saying, but at the same time, like, oh, it doesn't work. Anybody I see. <laughs> what I told them was, I'm leaving the camera here with these guys, and once we start up, start washing the car, we'll get the camera to watch the camera. Ooh, guys, something's happening. Are you administratively just real quick? Just run on the camera. Uh, for, for an internet audience who wants to know what's going on. He does phenomenal work. I know several of you have already had Bart take pictures of your cars. This is going to be state of the art, and so it's, it's really going to be a, a wonderful facility for the community. Uh, Bart's got some cards. I'm not sure where he put them. We'll maybe put some up at the front of the store, and uh, so feel free to pick some up there. That's coming attractions. But for this spring, we'll get, get another, uh, another kind of a similar deal. Maybe we take it up a notch. There's things that we can elevate everybody's game on the automotive detailing. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on over to Levi and Anthony. Right. right. Oh, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blind as a bat. Thanks, guys. No, you're fine. So I got two buckets here uh, filled with about four gallons each of just warm water out of our tap in the sink here. Uh, this is a gallon of O&R, but what we've got included in the kit are, are uh, eight ounce bottles. And the dilution ratio is one ounce for two gallons of water. So we've got four gallons here, two ounces of water. Uh, just so happens on our 32 ounce bottles, our caps are half ounce caps, which make it very easy. So basically we're just gonna put four capfuls of the product in there. Uh, for those of you that don't know already, a tablespoon is a half an ounce already. So, and then, and then for reference to the eight ounce bottles that are going to come in that kit, the cap on those are a quarter ounce. So you just have to double that. I know it's a math going on. Just, just do one ounce. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. So, so we're just going to put this stuff in here. The dilution is important, guys. If you dilute it too heavily, um, to work, like just say you get it to the clay loop dilution, you may have some streaking when it comes to drying. So really when it comes to polymers, uh, less is more, uh, really. And so you want to make sure that you're right on the money or even a little less than what you would normally put in. This is also one of the only chemical companies I know of that tells you to, if one spray is good, half a spray is best. So. Most chemical companies are always like, oh, we'll just a little, a little heavier, get it a little better. Uh, these guys are, uh, you're using too much, you're doing it wrong. Uh, which, is, which is very interesting in and of itself to have. Most companies don't do that. So uh, we're going to put it in the second bucket. So if you do a traditional two bucket wash, those of you that know, you have a soap bucket, a rinse bucket. Uh, with O and R, you can still do a two bucket method. Yep but put O&R in the second bucket because every time you rinse your, your sponge or towel or whatever you're using, if you have just standard water, you are diluting your O&R even more as you're bringing by adding more water into the product. So if you just have two separate buckets of O&R, you'll still, still be safe, still be good. Also, it smells really good. I don't know. I don't know if that makes a difference to anybody, but it smells really good. <laughs> well, and we've got the car wash. We've got the O and R with wax included. It smells like green apples. It's a separate one. We have it inside. It's a green bottle, and basically it has all of the properties of O and R, having that polymer technology, but with a little bit of the carnauba wax that comes from the optimum car wax. So for the people who may not have time to wax their car on its own, that might be the product for you. 
and you just have a wax basically every time you'd wash the car. And it would work very similar to like a wash and wax that you would get from a store, but it would have that no rinse technology and it would be polymer based where you don't have to dry it off or you don't have to rinse it off at the end. Notice the no bubbles. No, yeah, yeah. No, no, and that's going to be weird for people. That's I gotta, weird. I gotta say that it's going to be weird. Not seeing <laughs> suds, not seeing bubbles. It's going to feel weird. The water is still going to be slick, and you have your choice. Like I said before, uh, a polymer is a natural water softener. So if you have hard water at your house and you know it's hard, this will soften that water. It'll prevent those water spots or etchings from happening. Um, but if you choose to use distilled water, uh, that's probably my favorite preference, whether you buy it in the store or whether you have a reverse osmosis machine or, or, or some type of DI machine to distill the water. It makes the uh, O&R a little bit slicker, uh, adds some more lubricity to it. It feels really nice. You want to grab that? Yeah. So, um, and then uh, right here. So, did we go into the IK spray at all? Yeah. We didn't. Okay, so the IK sprayer is a new addition to uh, our rag company lineup and, and what we're carrying now. And this is an amazing tool. Uh, we found it at SEMA. We've sold almost 500 of these in the last, I think, two months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they're flying off the shelves. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. We just filmed a video on them, kind of a, a, a complete what is the IK sprayer lineup. We have multiple models. This is the multi, which is going to be great for doing a O&R wash. And then we have our foamer that's over there on the shelf, uh, which basically foams. It's a, foamer, small. It's, it's a foamer and a pressurized sprayer, which is really, really cool. But uh, these are really high quality sprayers. We do have these as well. You don't have to use these. If you have some empty spray bottles around your house, whether they're from Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever, what you can do is after you've mixed your dilution, perfectly in your buckets, you can now fill your solution up inside uh, that, that bottle. Now we have the same dilution. Yeah, the same dilution, and that'll be your pre-spray dilution. And what's really cool too, it has a long shelf life, so let's just say you want a bunch of O&R in bottles, right? Just to have around the house as either cleaners or having them for interior detailers They're or outside also detailers. Also great stainless steel cleaners. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. So yeah. Those of you with stainless steel fridges and things like that, you get the fingerprints and the walls, and you just can't get that off. Oh, and ours is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think our fridges look better than our cars, yeah, right? I yeah. Think so. <laughs> so, yeah, you have multiple options. You can fill them up with your own sprayers. You can do it that way. You can pick up one of these. What we like about these is, you know, Levi, you have arthritis, and so when it comes to actually that trigger function, it hurts your fingers. Just 20 years of pulling trigger sprayers. Destroyed it, so yeah. that helps me out. <laughs> so it's just a pump sprayer. It's all it's on the name. There's no batteries or anything. People ask us all the time, what's in these things? Like, how do they work? It, it's, it's a pump sprayer, but they're going to be more high quality than your traditional weed sprayer. These come from Spain. They're imported from Spain. This company's been um, doing this for 60 years. This is all they make. Are fresh yeah, this is all this is all they do. And so the construction of these is really high quality. You have a couple different settings on here, but I pressurize it. You guys, did you guys hear that? Okay, so that's an auto, it's an automatic release. It tells you when it's pressurized. So if I were to let, let that go and pump it up again, you'll hear it release some air. And it's, that lets you know when it's, when it's good. So, all right. Then you adjust your nozzle here. You have a couple different settings. You can have it to where it's a pinpoint setting, like that. Or you can have it to where it's more of a spray setting. And so, like any wash, you should always work your way from top to bottom, right? You want to be rinsing from the top, getting that dirt to dwell down uh, to the sides of the car. So, do a pre-spray like this. And what's cool about these sprayers, too, is that uh, typically you're going to run out of a solution before you run out of pressure. Uh, these things hold a lot of pressure and they go for a long time. The foamer is a little different. The foamer, the foamer uses, uses a lot more, more air. <clears throat> So you just want to make sure that you're covering all the surface. You don't have to sit there and hold it and make sure you're seeing it rinse. Remember, you're letting the actual polymers do the work. You're letting the technology do the work. So what he's work. doing, when, when we pre-spray this, its job is to encapsulate, which is, like you say, encapsulate, give that dirt, uh, pick up those dirt particles, and then it's going to emulsify, which means it's going to start breaking down the entire car. that dirt. Yes. Yep. I am pre-spraying the entire car. And I can let this sit on here for 10 years or 10 minutes, it's not going to harm the paint at all. And it's going to spot, but it, what it'll leave is what's known as a polymer spot. So not a water spot, just a polymer spot. All you got to do is re-wet the surface with O&R, and those spots disappear. What about temperature? It's not sensitive to temperature at all. Yeah. Actually, the hands are more sensitive to the temperature, so I use warm water, uh, so it's not so shocking. What about direct sunlight? 
direct sunlight, it's safe in direct sunlight as well. If you are in, let's say, it's 100 degrees outside and you're washing your car and you're trying your hardest to fight the sun, do a panel at a time. So wash a fender, wash a door, wash the windows, do it, do it that way. Uh, that way it's just easier because you, if you let it dry over the course of the car, it's just wasting product. So the easiest way is to just do it. This is a car over here do it in this bay. Yeah, or you can do it in this bay right here. I'm getting a little low, guys. I'm going to have to refill for the back of this. So all you do is release the pressure. You don't want to undo it when it's pressurized. Twist this guy off right here. Yeah, you can see if you want, you can get up close and start looking at the bubbles and the beads. It will have dirt particles in encapsulated in the water. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally safe for fabric as well. Alright, you guys gotta let me know. Did I miss a spot? Be honest. Look right in here. Right in here, you can see all kinds of dirt get picked up. Wash it down. So I screwed the entire car, yeah. and honestly I cover this a lot more than what you typically need to do. I mean you can typically get away with just a light misting or a light spray. I wanted to just saturate it just, just because, but you can see that basically this car shouldn't have any wax on it right now. I mean it's from, it's from the actual dealer. Um, I doubt they're putting a ton of wax if not just a spray wax. But what O&R does on its own is it starts to beat up, like many of you can see. And if you were to look up close, if this car was a little bit dirtier, or even as it is now, you can actually see the dirt swirl. And you can see it on the, on the back panel. Within the little panels, bubbles, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah. And so I pre-sprayed the entire car, and we're going to start with the actual paint, glass, and everything first. We're going to save the wheels for last. That's something that I like to do on its own, um, just because... If I do the wheels first and then I'm spraying, I'm going to get them wet anyways. So finishing with the wheels last uh, makes less of a mess. Yeah, one thing to remember too, because this is a substantive polymer, it has a memory. So once it attaches itself to the clear coat, the clear coat remembers it in a sense. But what it is is the polymer is sitting on the surface. So when another substantive polymer that is of its own likeness finds itself, it'll connect. So the joke is... That your car, just like the tires and the tire gel, won't accept anything else. The car actually seems to wash easier and easier the more you use O and R. So because it builds those little substantial polymers on top of each other, so that the car, the joke is that it has a memory, and so it remembers. And, and you'll notice the more you use O and R, uh, the easier it is to clean. The longer it will stay cleaner uh, because of those polymers on the surface. The build of those polymers on the surface. So. All right, so now it's time to pull out. We're going to pull out our washer here, which we have over here. And like I mentioned before, we're going to be using the Mings Royale towels. So these are the coral fleece weave towels. Um, these are extremely soft. Uh, if you had a chance to feel one, you know how soft it is. But now I'm going to dunk it in this O&R, and then it's going to start to feel... Uh, be it's going to be spongy. It's going to feel a little slimy. I want everybody to, to actually get a feel and try it out. But I'm going to show you initially what we do for a wash. So... We dunk the towels in here. Right after you mix your solution, you can let them soak. You want to let them soak for a little while, um, kind of let them dwell. And then what I like to do 
Well, we did two buckets there. So the joke is two buckets, one on either side. <laughs> <laughs> so because of the fact that O and R uh, is what's known as Zwitter Ionic, it's a German term and it has uh, the meaning is that it's neither uh, positive nor negative. So the particles that we're picking up off the surface, when they reach the bucket, they are released and are pulled to the bottom of the bucket. The reason we have grit guards in there is mostly to stop you from touching the bottom of the bucket. Uh, at home, I keep my bucket of O&R for three weeks. I put a lid on it, I wash my car, I put a lid on it, and I leave it. To some people, that sounds crazy, but I've been using O&R for about five years, and I trust the science, and I trust Dr. G and what he tells me. Uh, so that's what I do. You can dump your water after every wash if you want. It's totally fine. I purposely try to scratch my vehicles with O&R. Um, that's who I am as a detailer, and I have the ability to fix my things, so I'm not telling you guys to do that, but I am telling you that it's safe enough that you can use one bucket to wash the vehicle. Yeah. Now, on a heavily you dirty, muddy. filthy you go, you go, car, yeah, you go taking your car muddy, yeah. you don't want to... Let's say you drive it down to Salt Lake and back in the middle of a snowstorm, and you come back and you got all the ice and the sand and the de-icer and everything on the side of the car, don't do that. <laughs> get it, get it, wash, you know, wash it and, and do it the right, you know, get it the right way. But if it's like this, where it's just lightly dusty, it's been sitting in the garage, and maybe it's like some of you that keep your car in the garage all winter, but, you know, there's dust and things that accumulate, and maybe it's, you know, you want to go out and wash it. It's fine. You just keep it on R. It's not going to hurt anything because you're not getting a large concentration of uh, dirt and particles and things like that. That makes sense. So... Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the towel. Now, the idea is that you don't want to take out a towel that's going to be soaking wet like that. That's, that's too wet. They're going to cause more of a mess than you actually need. So you want to kind of wring it out, squeeze it to where it's kind of between damp and wet, right? Yeah, I like it a little more where it's just barely dripping. Then what you're going to do is you can fold it, in a, you know, fold it into your force like that and sit on the surface. And what you're going to do is you're just going to do straight passes. You're not going to go do circular passes, you can do straight passes. So you can start like Anthony, go all the way back. You can do like that, you can, then you can flip it over. And then after that, what you do is flip it around. And once you get good at it, you'll be a lot faster. What's also great is I tend to live a little dangerously. And so you guys can see there's already dirt on the towel. So you can so I try and check the amount of dirt on the towel before I put it. Look like so that. Now, we're doing a big OCD. This is the safest way to do it. Okay? You don't have to do a single pass every single flip. We're doing it this way. I'm talking the safest way possible. Especially on the top where That's always going to be your clean. You can actually see your strokes, right? You can actually tell what strokes you have. Oh, yeah. And that, that, that way you can actually see the areas you've covered, the what areas that you haven't covered. So for the people that are trying to transition from soap water washes to this, where typically you'd see where you've gone, you know, past with a soapy mitt, be the same concept just with O and R now. And on glass, I just clean all the glass. I don't bother flipping my towel to flip it or anything because like I don't that. have to worry about marring or scratching. So, and then for the people that are OCD, if you want to at that point let the towel rinse and release that dirt that you've grabbed so far from the roof, you can and swap to a different towel, pull out your new one, and then keep going. You guys, I think you guys are picking it up. Right? I'm not getting a lot of feedback, but I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing you guys are getting it. So, so if Joe decide on the two bucket system, you're not actually executing that. You're just no. Picking, you and, can yeah. in a very simple way is just take your towels when you're done, and throw them in your other bucket, right. uh, let them soak, or you can use the big red sponge, which is the next thing I'll show. And this is, like I said, the key to this. This is the same. You just get it to where it's. Passes, and you just you just put it back in and let it release the dirt. Yep. And you just squeeze it out. Yeah. And you just can you can flare it out and make sure everything's in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I like this one so you don't have to hold it as many times. You have to dunk it more times. You can just dunk it too far. And what's your criteria to switch to the next Usually, once all, all uh, eight sides are back. So, as you get farther down the car, you'll notice it'll get dirty and dirty and dirty. So, what I like to do is at least leave. I work my way in a pattern around the vehicle. So I'll usually do the whole roof first, the windows or cabin, yeah, and then hood, the trunk, the top half, and then work the car in sections. Section. Usually it's three sections inside the cabin. All the way down the sides, around the front, and around the back. So with a lightly dusted car like this, you go through? Uh, you could three, go through three or six yeah. houses. Just depends yeah. on one, your familiarity of the product, comfort you get. And just how you know comfortable you get watching it. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get used to because again, no suds. It's a weird thing for people to get over. Uh, but what I like is you can see, like you said, you can see where you've been, where you have it, and if you get to a spot like I do in my shop in my garage, I do half my car. So I'll do one half first, and then I'll use my towels for that. And then I'll pull up another set of towels and then on the other side. And do that. So I know kind of what I've been around dirt and grime all the time, and so for me, I only use about three times a month my car on, on a car that's about this dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't worry too much about how dirty the towels can get. But again, it's personal preference. If you want to go five or six or seven or eight, only five. There are a lot of guys on the internet and YouTube that talk about that. Uh, they like to have lots of towels. So, there's no wrong way to do it. Are you pretty particular about the direction that you're wiping on? Uh, I try and keep, like I said, in the, like on something this dusty, I, it doesn't matter. But if I was on, say, a very, very heavily soiled surface, I'd work my way down. Just so that I'm not bringing that dirt across the panel and pushing everything down so I'm working least dirtiest to the dirtiest spots. And then I flip my sides and do that. Okay, who wants to try this? So the entire guy's dirty. Who wants to be the first one here? Somebody, come on up. You guys are all more welcome to get, just get, get a towel. I'm going to grab some other towels and I'm going to throw them in this bucket and I'm just going to let you guys go on autopilot, okay? You won't, you won't Don't be the scared. You're not going to hurt the car. You're not going to hurt the car. Just go for it. <laughs> Promise you. <laughs> you broke it. <laughs> so you can feel that towel when it gets wet. It's a little spongy. <laughs>
that he did that and did something inevitable and took a and he's really the best kid With this method, could come in hand if the car was just too dirt. So you do a pre rinse with the pressure washer, right. and then you're just going to sit and then do the washing. I live in Boston. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, let's uh, let's get the battery back charged. Um, I don't know where the cable is. I'll hold that for you. Want to go find the cable? Don't worry, guys. Live stream battery is getting a little bit low, but we'll come back to it. We're going to try and hook it in so it's got a, a power going directly into it. Now we just need an extension. <laughs> And we're back, guys. Sorry about the delay. We just had to plug in the live streaming device. Now we got power. But you can just get the surface just a little bit wet. Microfiber, uh, you know, key to water is it always finds a path of least resistance. So if you can make the towel wet, the water will go to the towel. Uh, and so you can do that, or you can use your quick detail spray or whatever you're using as a primer. On this side, I can just take, you can take this towel, you can dry it any way you want. You can pull, you can set it out and blot it. You can this. do this method right here, it's called the drag method. Some people like this, like you put it out there like that, and then pull it across the surface like that. Key is just watching, watching out how you're going to, uh, like we said, scratch the deal. Uh, what I like about this towel, though, is it lends itself very well to my favorite way, which is just wiping. <laughs> yeah, because there are guys that there are towels. We do have towels. Our waffle leaf towel really needs to more do a block better, where you're where you're patting it down and get it. The thirst pockets need to be activated. They need to absorb that water. Uh, our twist and shout works great for dragging. Take that across the surface as just one big sheet, and it just pulls water off the surface like a wreck. But this towel is kind of the best of both worlds. You can block, you can dry, you can wipe, you can wash. Okay. Who wants to? Who wants? Who wants to get in on the drying process? Because there's a, there's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> so one of the other things you can do is while it's wet, we got car wax here. You can give it a couple sprays of car wax. While the car is wet, put your towel on the car where you sprayed it, and then what I like is you just can go. And now you dry the car, you wax the car, and you have that protection. So it's all in one step. Just, just as easy as that. You don't have to sit there and do the you don't have to Mr. Miyagi it for you know. So these are the smith. Yeah, there's like twist tile on one side and then the top on the other. And I got a little thumb on the loop in them. No, they're, they're really nice. Uh, definitely make drying a little easier when you're on like, your car. Actually, because it sucks dragging the towel on the ground. Yeah. That's the whole reason we made them. Uh, one plug will yeah, one, one we'll easily do the entire car. And so we can do it here. We'll get it a spray for you. Add a little bit of a drying aid to it. Yeah, there's no question there. 
Don't worry, we'll get some other angles, guys, in a little while. It's just we're hardwired in with the camera right now, so you got to stay put for a little longer. This is going to be your final buff towel or your wax towel, depending on how you want to use it. So if you didn't want to use your wax or you didn't want to use your quick detail in the drying process like we showed you over there, you can actually do it on its own if you want to do so. Let's just say you want to add some extra wax separately from the drying process. So that's where the Eagle 600 would come into play. So just like we mentioned before, the spray wax, you simply do a spray or two sprays, do your wipes, you should have a nice clean surface now, so you'll flip over the towel, buff it off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't spray your wax and blow dry, is that what you're saying? Definitely don't do that. No, you definitely need to use a towel to do the wiping process. Yeah. What was that? If you, if you weren't waxing, if you weren't going to add any wax, let's just say you did your own R wash and you want to blow dry it, you blow dry it, you're done. You don't have to touch it at first, right? Or at least until you're next to wash. But if you're wanting to use the washing answer, or if you're wanting to use a car wax, then you would have to touch it. It's inevitable. You're going to have to touch the, the paint eventually if you're wanting to add the extra, you know, little cherry on top. But if you want to just do the wash your own R, blow dry it, and move on to like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Hold on guys, I think I got an idea for how we can set the camera up higher. Hold on. It might take a couple minutes.
Sorry guys, don't get dizzy. <laughs> are about to get thrown up on a gorilla pod. This will be interesting. I'm going to throw it on the gorilla pod and hang it from the rafter. Can you bring that ladder over here? That would be super. Yeah. Okay, guys, try not to get dizzy. We might flip it around. <laughs> We shall see. Sorry, we're discovering this all during the process of shooting. Right. Basically, we're limited by the length of this USB, but we can potentially hang it upside down. But yeah, if we get a nice corner angle. I think yeah, it's gonna be going upside down. It's probably gonna be best, probably like right here somewhere. That I was gonna ask. Let me just adjust the stock and rotate. Know where you want it. It works. Okay. Yeah. Here's a dollar. Thank you. 
Yeah. And the guy flew over the top of the mountains and stuff. And I was just spraying right there. Spraying all your plastics, all the rubber. And again, those of you with clear bra, the car wax is totally safe on it. And like I said, my favorite thing is it doesn't leave a uh, that edge. Just a clear mask on the front of the PPF. Again, I apologize. We didn't wash any of these towels, so I got like. <laughs> I recommend washing them all before you use them. Remove any of this. These are the new Eagle 600. I have to use them. 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 I have to use them.
I don't for a I I got on one when I my wife has been going down. There's a different sound. I think two people. Is it blue car? <laughs> if we go out for dinner or something like that. Are you guys want to play? We do. Unless they just don't want to pull the weather.
All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping up here pretty soon, but in the meantime, we'll just leave it streaming, so you guys enjoy. John, Yeah, it, it, it is when you consider the overall price of what you're, what you're getting. And so, 
I, uh, yeah, and that's the thing, clear bras, that's, you know, it, it kind of really comes down to that OCD nature, right? Yeah. You, you get a rock chip in the clear bra, mm -hmm. is that going to bother you? Because you still have a chip now, it's still in the clear bra, you're going to yeah. visually see that. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, it's the, it so then it's the difference of, are you going to be more okay with that? Are you going to be more okay with an actual chip in the paint? Mm -hmm. You know, because then you have to think, okay, I got a chip in my clear bra, it's good not in the paint, that's great, right? And then you have to think, about, now I have to get that pulled off, reapply, yeah. you know, down the road, however yeah. you do it. It's just they're inevitable things. I'm just glad it's you don't see any more people go part way anymore. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. now they go off. The old ones do. Even when you put the, uh, what's his name, um, Brian with the uh, gearhead, yeah. put on my ceramic coating, and he said, you know, there's really not a lot you can do before you put the coating over that. Yeah. Yeah. Without yeah. taking the risk of more around it coming off. So, well, this is a beautiful car. I think it's a great one. Oh, good. It was good. We can yeah. only do the whole thing. So, yeah. you know what? It's like. My it's, only suggestion were to me. Yes, you want to ask me I know. Yeah, I that was really yeah, yeah. And that, that if you buy from the store, it's, it's not a discount, but it's less think, expensive than online. I think they're trying to tell Jeff and Phil, they're trying to tell people that in the store, letting them know. They let me know for some. Yeah. 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 It's, Always come to the store if you can. I mean, like I said, I was, I've been coming to the store for years. Yeah. And I always, because I always check the price online. Mm -hmm. Price online, and then that would be checked. It yeah. doesn't matter if there's coupons yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Come to the store. And, and, and you, that, can touch, you can touch the stuff. You can, you can touch the stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, too. We're, 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 we, we like our loyal customers that come into the store. Yeah. And for the people that come in all the time, we have no and, problem tossing them. Yeah. They've done that to me before. Like, I think I bought Lane one of the bill tabs for him. You guys gave me a beanie. Yeah. Which I had the picture on it for Oktoberfest the night before. Oh, nice. We took the wheels off. It was like 11 at night. We oh, gone yeah. to the rodeo, PBR. We came back, had the wheels off. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my beanie on. It was cold and we're cleaning the wheels. And uh, I mean, but he had, I was doing just the wheel. He was doing the tire. And I was like, yeah. here we are, midnight with my Red Company products. It was. That's, yeah, that's awesome. But now I'm actually pretty impressed at how this looks. I wish, I mean, most people, general people, may not be able to see the big difference in the gloss and the yeah. difference between just doing a, a you know a wash in for a brand new car. For a brand new yeah. car, but I mean, I can and, and I can and yeah. I'm like that. This looks pretty dang good because one of the guys is like, oh, you know, does this really have that much gloss? I can't really tell. And I'm like, well. Inside of the lights. It's like, you know, you have to, there's certain scenarios where I'm like, I know the second this pulls outside, it's yeah. kind of like diamonds inside Costco. They look yeah. like, and then you come out and it's like, oh, that ain't so spectacular. People are asking me if I have the, um, the wax stuff, and I'm like, I don't because I have a really big Yeah. And I'm like, it doesn't really make sense to have a wax stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, for you, it will air just take like the top is the coating. The coating yeah. sheets of water is yeah. already amazing. Yeah. Just leave it as is. And you already you already have gloss. The wax would just, I mean, it would be more of a smells good. You yeah. Know, you yeah. Like, you like, smells good. Smells good. Yeah, like smells smell. good. So, and that's a big thing. I mean, when I, I, you know, I clean so many cars, and I clean my own cars so many times, and eventually yeah. I just, I love the way things smell. And I'm, Me too. Uh, so, because I can't remember when I put some in a spray bottle and I made up a new thing of it. We had other spray bottles and I said, put you on Robert and then I just opened up and smelled it. Oh yeah, that's the deal. You still have your ego then, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's my baby. And yeah. so that thing, it's, it's still, it, it's looking good. I just, I, uh, you have the Cody, which one? Five years, seven years? I have the, the Pro Plus, so I got I got the big one on there. Seven. And, and, and I, I, I don't, seven. I, I think don't, it's a seven. I don't seven. really know because there's been a couple instances where I, you know, the dog, I know the, the dog, dog. I told <laughs> the dog situation, and that was like, I know, it was just it, it almost adds a little more stress than I would like. I like the fact that it's coated. Yeah. It, it makes me feel good, but at the same time, like, yeah. You know, damage is gonna happen. Like I, yeah. I, I could, I could. It made me actually even more paranoid, to be honest. Yeah. Now I'm driving down the road, and I have to think, oh, okay, I got this expensive coating on here, and I've got all this money for this damn car. And what if, God forbid, a truck drops a giant rock, which I had, I saw a couple weeks ago. The, no, I saw, yeah. I saw a giant chunk of ice, right, fall off the back of the car during the, the snow. Oh, right, dude, I'm, I'm from Oregon, and there's little sheets like this big flying off roofs. Oh, Bricks. I'm talking myself. 
put it down the strike and took out the front of like it was some Hyundai accent. Yeah. Pop talk and I saw it hit the bumper. It didn't just explode. It hit the bumper, lodged itself between the plastic fins in the front. And I'm pretty sure it broke a lot of that bumper. And I'm thinking, God forbid, God forbid. All right, you're in the car, so it's gonna. Carolyn's the insurance will actually cover the cost of that. You know what you're thinking about it? Will, will the insurance be able to fix it, make it perfect again? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. So hello everyone on the live stream. Uh, just so you know, this car is about to pull out. So if you're hoping to get that on and uh, take a look at how this 9 -1 uh just stay tuned. Yeah, don't worry about it. That's easy enough. That's, that's cool. That's not a big deal at all. Nice. Yeah, thank you for letting us letting us borrow it. Everybody loved the color, and I, you know, some people are saying, "Oh, I, I gotta go down to the dealership and check what they got." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So everything got yeah, nice and clean. So. Did you get any polish? Uh, no, we we used it. We used up. We used up. We used up a, a bonding gel. It, it doesn't add shine. It just it just. Deepens the. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no tire shine. It was just sweet gel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you get your numbers or? Oh, yeah, we have a good tactile. Oh, sweet. Yeah, around Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're The live stream had to be with the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Alright, I'm gonna head out there, guys, because okay. I'm so much. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Alright, no problem. Is the key in there? Yep, yeah. key is right, right in the same spot. Thank you very much, guys. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. take care. See ya.